Okay, so here's the starter problem with um, Zoe A and Zoe G, if you really need to, you know, differentiate between the two Zoe's. And we've got some information here. After five seconds, she's 102 metres away from Zoe, and after 23 seconds, she's uh, 48 metres away from Zoe. So we've got the three questions there. Now, Matt commented on something, but I wonder who else noticed. Who realised that this was an arithmetic sequence problem? One person did, he's not putting his hand up though. Two, three. You saw that it might be, okay. Um, if you tackled it via uh, your physics knowledge, maybe it's more efficient than what I'm about to show you, but I don't think it will be, but it might be. So just keep that in mind, that it might be more efficient. So what we can do as a solution, if we're tackling it as an arithmetic sequence, the key there is that it says at a constant speed. So that means that as each second passes, the same distance is passed, okay? That effectively tells you that it's an arithmetic sequence because it's going up or down by the same number each time. So what I can do is I can start drawing out my solution like so. We can say at n equals five, what does that mean? Well, that would be um, a five. like so. Well, what do we know about A5? A5 is 102, because at after five seconds, she's 102 metres away. So the sequence would have at A5, 102 metres. Good, good, good. But there's also something else we know as well, and we know that for an arithmetic sequence, the fifth term is A1, plus, do you remember, n minus one, so that would make this four multiplied by d. We don't know what a one is, or a sub one, and we don't know what d is yet, but we can work it out. What's the other fact we know? After 23 seconds, she's 48 meters away. So we've got n equals 23. She's 48 metres away from Zoe. So what's my next bit I'm going to write? A sub 23. And that's equal to 48. Now, I should point out here, it's really important for you to sort of pick up on these cues. The arithmetic sequence is diminishing. It's going lower and lower. And that means something about D, the value of D. Yeah, good. What's... Someone else finish this off for me? This line, A sub 1. Good, for those people that called that out. 22D. Okay, so what? Well, what we can do is we can subtract. Oops, went to the erase tool. We can subtract those terms away from each other. Now the benefit of doing that is that when I subtract this line from this line, the A1 and the A1 will cancel out. So we don't need to know the first term yet because A1 will go. Okay, so hope that makes sense. It's, it always works this way because A1 is always by itself. So we go 102 minus 48 and that leaves you with 54. A1 minus A sub, sorry, A sub 1 minus A sub 1 is 0, so that's gone. And 4D minus 22D is, make sure you get your negatives right there, negative 18D. Okay. Divide both sides by negative 18 and you get D equal to negative 3. So you've now worked out the difference. So that means as each second passes, Zoe has travelled three metres towards Zoe. Okay. Now, the question was, what is Zoe's speed? This draws into your physics knowledge a little bit. What is Zoe's speed? William. What's the value though? Yep. 
Correct. So, so how do we write that as a speed? Mm -hmm. Three meters per second. Thank you. That's what I was looking for. Everything you said was correct. I was just trying to get it into the right speed. And the thing that William did not say was negative three meters per second. Okay, so speed is always positive. Okay, the negative just denotes what direction they're going, either towards or away, kind of thing. In the relationship of this, negative three means um, towards. Yeah. So we can write that conclusion down. I.e., Zoe is travelling three meters per second, like that. Okay. So if you wrote negative three meters per second, just be mindful of changing that. Put a note to yourself that speed is always written positively. Well, it's actually not really positive. It's actually written without sign. Question? Yeah, I looked it up. 1.4 meters per second is the average walking pace of a human being. Yeah, just a speed. <laughs> so you're going to, well, I don't know who's going towards who, but one of the Zoe's is going twice as fast as average. But you know what? It's exciting when you see someone across the field that you want to have a chat to, so you pick up your pace a bit, don't you? Yeah, that works. It'd be more worrying if it was moving away from Zoe because that means that, you know, clearly did not want to be in the same list. Okay. Part B. How far away from Zoe was Zoe? If I had to rewrite this as an arithmetic uh, sequence question, what am I really asking? Exactly. What is the value of A sub 1? But because we've worked out D, we're good to go. I'm going to pick um, A sub 5 because the numbers look prettier to me. So we can start off with 102 is equal to A sub 1 plus 4 times by negative 3. You can do all this in your head, really, but I'm just doing it just for the sake of it, which means that A sub 1 is equal to 114 metres. Okay. Tip for young players, in the maths, in the IB maths exam, they sometimes will take marks off if you don't put units in at the end. They don't give half marks. Yeah, but if it's out of three, you get two. It's not like you'll get I'll zero. Get yeah, that's exactly right. You don't get two and a half. Okay, so you can get a mark taken off for not including units. And um, and I will say in an exam situation, you don't get more marks for writing, i.e. she was 114 metres away. William? Thank you, yeah. Seventeen. Thank you. Yeah. Good pick up. When I wrote this, because I, I don't, I don't pretend that I do these things. When I wrote this question, I didn't think about that. And then when I was um, going through it myself, I went, "Oh, hang on. One would be one second in, wouldn't it? A one would be one second in. So she, she would have. So at, at one second, she'd be at one hundred and fourteen seconds. So she was actually." 117. I wasn't going to say anything simply because I was going to move on from this, but thank you for Brent picking that up. Yeah. And the reason why I didn't want to bring that up right now, I was going to come back to it, but the reason why I was going to um, uh, just skip it for the time being, is because there's no concept of n equals zero in arithmetic progressions. The first value is always a sub one, but that doesn't actually correlate to what we do in functions. And I'm going to make that link uh, in tomorrow's lesson that if I was writing this as a linear function, the starting point is always x equals zero, right? That's the y-intercept. So there's a bit of a, a slight disconnect between arithmetic sequences and um, uh, and uh, linear functions, although they otherwise act very similarly. Okay, thanks, William. That was a really good pick up. Any questions? I have to skip over to do how long did it take Zoe to reach Zoe. So 
Uh, any questions before I skip screens? Okay, moving on then. So part C is how long does it take Zoe to reach Zoe? We now have a general form or a general term. We know that A sub N is equal to 114, not 117, because A sub 1 is um, what we use in the general term. So 114 plus N minus 1 times by negative 3. Not my negative brackets there. Putting brackets around numbers, especially negative numbers, makes sure that you know you're timesing that and not subtracting 3. Um, you could simplify that if you want to. I will, um, but you don't always have to, and sometimes it's a waste of time. So, But I'll expand that. So that's minus 3n plus 3. Is that okay with everyone? The minus 1 times minus 3 is a plus 3, and that's equal to 117 minus 3n. Okay, there's that 117 coming up again, isn't it? Yeah, but it's not the general, it's not A sub 1. So 117 minus 3n. Okay, so it says how long does it take Zoe to reach Zoe? And we can assume that, um, well, no, I won't say. What, what, what can I substitute in and what am I looking to find? We want to find n. That's the first thing. We want to find n because n will tell me the number of seconds. Okay, that's good. That's good to know. So how can I use the fact, how long will it take Zoe to reach Zoe in order to fill in another fact here? I've got a sub n. I've got 117. I know I need to work out n. So therefore, without even telling me what it is, the thing I need to be able to suss out is the other unknown, right, Aaron? Yeah, A sub N zero, good. Okay, because the distance is decreasing, so the thing you need to interpret from the question is what does it mean for Zoe to reach Zoe? And that is that the distance is now zero between the two of them. Okay, the distance is now zero between. Now, once you've pegged on that, the rest of it's not too bad. We have zero for, for A sub N equals 117 minus 3N. I'm just going to add 3N to both sides to give me 3n equals 117. If your algebra skills are weak, do let me know at some point so that I can give you some exercises to sort of strengthen yourself up because what I'm doing here, I'm not gonna really dwell on. And then divide both sides by three and I get, has anyone worked it out already? Did anyone else get 39? Right, so it's 39 seconds. So it took Zoe 39 seconds to reach Zoe. And that's how you do it. Any questions? Okay, it's not all about problem solving. It's often about just having a crack at, at doing a whole bunch of different problems to bring it in. So in a moment, for, um, I'm gonna write an exercise number up on the board and you're gonna have a crack at your textbook. I'll have two kind of jump in points for you to have a go at in a second. So you have plenty of practice time, but um, I'll just, oh, I'll leave this in the video as well, why not? I just wanted to come back to this to see if anyone was able to crack it without um, Googling it, asking someone else, or Lily spilling the beans. And that was this sequence here. So the first term was this one, the second term was this one, and then it was this one, and the, it is obvious when you know it. Then there's this one. Okay, just out of curiosity, did anyone manage to work out this sequence? without being told or Googling it or something like that? Anyone work it out? Okay, I let's... Didn't work it out. I, I had if you have a hunch, write down the next number in the sequence, if you've got it. You can just uh, lean your hand on it. Oh no, it's the timer again. <laughs> No. That is not right, but thank you for trying. It's not symmetry. It kind of looks a bit symmetrical, doesn't it? It looks a bit Pythagoras theorem, doesn't it? I mean, Pascal's triangle a bit. Anyone else? Did you get that right? That is 
Absolutely correct. Well done. Okay, so Claudia's got it. Anyone else want to have a crack at it? That that, that didn't Google it. Oh, you think you figured it out for yourself? You didn't Google it or someone didn't tell you? You can just go up the top. Asking your dad counts as Google. Yep. Hang on. How do you want to erase tool? Just put that up the top, bro. Is he right? He's right. Well done. This is called a say it sequence. So let's read out the sequence. What are we starting with? One. one. Then what's the next one? one. So hear it. So we're starting off with? One. Then we've got? One. We've got one, one. And then, then we've got? Two, one. Then we've got? And if I just pause a little bit, we'll say it like this. We, we had before two, one. Now we've got one, two. Then? One, one. Next line down. One, one. Then, one, two, then. Two, one. See where I'm pausing? Is that making it clearer for you? Next line. What's this? Three, one. What have I got here? Three ones. Two twos. What have we got here? Two twos in a row. What have we got here? One, one. So in this line, I've, I've started off with, I, can't, I don't think I can do two at the same time. So I'll do it on the board. Wow, the talking while I am is just rudeness. So I've got how many threes here? Then I've got how many ones? Then I've got how many twos? Then how many ones? See it? So you should be able to write down the next line. And, don't do it. It's okay. We'll move on. But you, you should be able to write the next thing. So it's called, I can't remember what it's called. There's a say it sequence or something like that. So you look at the line beforehand and if you say what you see, one, three, one, one, two, twos, two, ones, and you write what the numbers, the digits down that you just said, you can generate. There's in fact this huge theoretical, even though it doesn't sound like a very numerical pattern, it's more of a verbal pattern, I suppose. There's actually like a mathematician that's done like this huge study on, you know, you start off with a different number to generate the whole sequences and, and there's actually quite a bit of maths behind it, which um, uh, made my head hurt when I read it. But if you're interested, let me know and I'll find the research on it and post it to Google Classroom. You want me to find it? Yeah. Okay, we'll do. Um, okay, so that was just a little brief interlude. Um, let's do some textbook work. Now, do note that I am using the textbook um, out of sequence. So it's not like we're starting at Chapter 1 and going all the way through to Chapter 27, okay? So just be mindful of that. Um, so I want – I don't have oh, – I have a page number. So I want you to turn to page 16, please. Yeah. No worries. Now, frequently, ladies and gentlemen, I'll have um, specific numbers I want you to do. But in this instance, there's only a few questions in 1E. Um, it'll probably take you the rest of the lesson unless you're quick. Um, and if you are, just let me know if you finish it all. But exercise 1E on page 16, I want you to do all of that. Now, if you look at that and you go, actually, that's a bridge too far for me, I'd like to just do some fundamentals first. Um, so the, the optional one is to go back and exercise and start off with exercise 1D. And that has some just, here is a sequence, work it out. Whereas 1E is more like, here is a word problem, treat it like a sequence and then work it out, okay? I think most of you, if not all of you, are ready for 1E, but if you feel like you're not, then go for 1D first. 
I'll just stop this recording and then I'll ask if there's any questions.